We are quickly going to go into Betaflight Configurator. You'll know that Betaflight is working properly if you have a second COM port here. COM1 is always there. If you have a COM4, 6, 10, anything besides one, typically it's working right. You hit connect. And we are now connected to the air unit. We disconnect, unplug the air unit. We're gonna let this cool down. So we're going to let this cool down while we talk for a second. So the next part of this is the flight controller. So in order to reach the flight controller, we are going to remove this plug that says FC next to it. And if you can order some fingernails from Amazon, you can actually get that out. It is a USB type C also which is great. Um, it's nice when they use type C's across the board. So we should be able to get in here and look at some settings without the battery plugged in, but we will not be able to spin the motors. So I have it set to automatically come up. So now we can check that this is a rotors out configuration right off the bat. It's in reversed D shot 600. That looks correct. The things to really check here, um, the receiver will not be working yet because we don't have a battery. The modes, we have an angled mode, that's AUX2. We have an arm, that's AUX1. So that could be correct, I'm not certain. So it looks like they may have been correct that this would have flown right out of the box. So one thing I like to do is calibrate this I want to make sure that when I lean it backwards, it goes backwards and forwards forward. Now, before I grabbed this and went, yep, it's working without actually looking at it. It's important to look at it and make sure that when you tilt it backwards, it's going backwards, forwards, left and right. So that is actually correct now. Um, let me show you. So I pick up the copter and you want to tilt it forward and back left and right so the calibration is correct if for some reason your quad just jumps into the air when you first fly it or does something weird it just keeps side swiping into things typically you have to come in here and redo the calibration i'm going to go ahead and calibrate it by just clicking the button and it's now calibrated so as long as my desk was flat it's calibrated again so forward back left and right these typically come set up correctly right out of the box. So now we have ports and as long as you have MSP connected then you will be able to get OSD and OSD is going to be on-screen displays so you can see that it's got some voltage, it's got a low voltage, it's got what mode you're in, it doesn't have the craft name, it does have the craft name but it's not showing here. Um, otherwise, I think that everything is set up, like they said, right out of the box. All you had to do is bind it and update it. So um, if you look at modes, AUX1 is going to have to be in any switch mode, probably. So let's go ahead and take a look at this and make sure the controller is connected. So I can plug this in. And this will then give me, should give me a bound light. There, now it's bound, so I can come into the motor section. I can click this. Now I do not have props on. Make sure you don't have props on. I can check. What I do is I turn them on and I touch them and make sure that they are spinning out of the ends into the middles for each. So that's correct. So everything looks like it's correct. You can check one by one and make sure this should be back right. Number two is front right, number three is back left, and number four is front left. So those are all correct. So we can go back into setup, we can go into the receiver, and we can check that we have throttle, yaw, roll left, roll right, pitch forward, pitch back. It looks like it's all correct and ready to go. We save, we disconnect, and our quad is ready to test. So 
So we next thing will be just to watch this baby fly. All right, so the last phase of this is going to be to get the props on. So the leading edge is going to be the thicker edge, and they're going to be out. So this one's going to go here. So you take it with your hand, and you spin it, and you know that the, ang the deflection angle is going to be down. So for this one, this would be the wrong way. This one is going to spin out, so this one spins out this way. Spinning out, the deflection angle is down. This one is going to spin out. The deflection angle would be down. Let's see here, what do we got? Leading edge. They did something. Somehow they got the props mixed because these props are all the wrong props. So that's a copy of that prop. That is a copy of that prop. So I need the opposites. So that makes sense. So they put two on each and two on each. It would have been easier for them to put all four and all four, but they didn't want to make it easy on us. So this one comes this way and this one comes this way and we are done. Out, out, out and out. So get these pop nuts. These props are this look like the same props that came on the Nazgul 5. So this should be a really good comparison in both the flight performance of this quad and the difference between the dead cat configuration, which is the arms coming out, versus the standard X configuration. One thing to note is they no longer have reverse nuts. They're just nylon thread nuts. So we do that. So we're going to hold the motor and you're going to feel the nylon nut's going to be tight, but as soon as it actually makes pressure, it's going to get considerably tighter very, very quick. So again, we're always turning righty tighty, not lefty loosey. I like to hold it from the bottom so I can get my palm on it. Tight. And one thing I've noticed about the Nazgul props is they bend before they break, at least for the five. So at least the version, the version two that I have. So this will be another nice test here. So once all the props are on there tight, theoretically, if we plug the battery in, we go outside and we fly this. Quad. So let's do a quick comparison of the two. So you can see the dead cat versus the standard X configuration. So they're both five inch quads. They both have the same motors and the same props, but you can see that one is considerably shorter. Now, the way that you the way that you sort of tally this is you can see the distance between these in the front. The distance between these two props is exactly the length of this uh, Allen key. The distance between this is a little smaller than the Allen key. When you rotate these props here, this is the same distance apart as the front props were apart. So this, this is a perfect square. Here, We've got almost the entire Allen key apart, but if you look at this section, not only do the blades not line up, they don't line up, but they're almost touching. So theoretically, this quad would flip faster than it will roll. I don't know if the rates will need to change. I'm a newbie just like you. So we're gonna fly it and we're gonna find out. Stay tuned.
hey, thanks for taking part in this learning experience. I haven't been doing it long, but I'm enjoying it. It's yeah, giving me an outlet for a hurt neck gotta just be a bad the inability to do anything else. Oh, well. so, you know, That's enough flying I appreciate you stopping by. Hopefully some of this information can help you. And if you've got information that can I'm help I'm me, post it in the comments below. Thanks a lot. Ciao.